I've been riding this horse so long, my foot's almost killing me. <laughs> hey, you've got no kick coming. Think of the poor horse. Oh, is that so? Well, of all the fool expeditions we've ever been on, this is the worst. Chasing a wagon show clean across Arizona. Well, that's a right good outfit. And besides, there's nothing wrong with wanting to see a show more than once. More than once. Seven towns in eight nights, not including Sundays. That's the life. What are you talking about? Well, what's the use of spending your life chasing doggies over hills? You sure are an arbitrary critter. Singing will never make you a living. Maybe not. But I sure get a lot of fun out of trying. Hey. There's the show up ahead there. Something must be wrong. You owe the liver stable a seven dollar feed bill. And you owe the town hall two dollars for coal oil. Uh, that's the lights. And you owe a twelve dollar board bill at Jim Carter's eating house. And you owe a ten dollar fee for making me ride out here to get you. Uh, well, uh, that seems to amount to about uh, twelve dollars, doesn't it? Yes, about twelve. Huh? Your calculation is just a little bit off, ain't it? It amounts to exactly thirty-one dollars. Well, now we've done such bad business the last week or two, Sheriff. It's sort of eaten up all our ready cash. Now, uh, I think if you let us get onto Tombstone, we'll be able to pay the bill in full. You ain't gonna get to Tombstone. On his them teams, John. Right. I reckon they're more than enough to cover what you owe. Uh, oh. Howdy, Professor. What's the trouble, Sheriff? This here show here has got a lot of unpaid bills that amounts to exactly $31. And I'm impounding them their teams until McGill pays up. Well, you can't do that. Are you trying to tell me what I can do and what I can't? Well, I'm, I'm mighty sorry that business has been so bad, sir. But they'll do all right in Tombstone. They ain't gonna get to Tombstone. I'm afraid the Sheriff's right, my boy. Well, maybe I could Square things with the sheriff, that is, if, if you wouldn't mind. Why, but I, uh... You know, I, I've always had a hankering to, to be in a show. 
I was just wondering if I'd uh, pay the sheriff off. Uh, maybe you could find a place for me in your troop. You know, I uh, play the guitar a little. Uh, well, I don't know if you'd like my voice or not, but I'd sure appreciate a chance. I'm, I'm, I'd be glad to see what you could do, but I, I couldn't allow you to... Uh... Oh, that's all right. Don't worry about it. Oh, what are you doing? Sheriff, if you just mark that bill paid now, mm. I'll be mighty pleased to. Mm. Ida, our luck seems to be changing. Poor fellow. He's just throwing his money away. I'm sorry to cause you any trouble like this, but the law's the law. Come on, John, let's get going. I'm mighty grateful to you, young man. <laughs> Don't mention it. Uh, my name's Mallinson, Tex Mallinson. This is Mr. Hopper, but uh, you can call him Grass for short. Oh, Tex. How do you do, Mr. Hopper? How do you do? Boys, meet Mr. Tex Mallinson and Mr. Grass Hopper. I do. How do you do? They're joining up with us. Glad to have you with us. Oh, thank you. Let's get going, men. Well, let's be on our way. I'm a howling fool from Texas with a six gun in my pack. I eat rattlesnakes for breakfast, my coffin's on my back. Got a bobcat for a partner and we get along sublime. I sharpen my teeth on tombstones just to pass away the time. Tombstone, Arizona, soon I'm gonna see. Pretty night broke, but if I don't choke, I'll sing a joke till I fill my poke. in Tombstone, Arizona. You're laying it on kind of thick, ain't you, Professor? <laughs> Them are pretty big letters. You think I can live up to all that? A mere bagatelle, my boy. With myself as impresario, your success is assured. Well, them are mighty big words, Professor. But you know, the text, he's a cowhand. He, he ain't no actor. My good man, I am a thespian. And to one who has trodden the boards with the immortal boon, nothing is impossible. Well, well, maybe you could do something for me then. Now, now, now listen to this. <laughs> Well, I, I guess these horses don't appreciate good music. You shouldn't have frightened them. You might have killed Billy. I don't get sore, Mike. It was fun. Uh, I think you need a little more practice, my good man. Just a little more practice. Say, mister, are you a play actor? Well, uh, uh, sort of. Well, what do you do? Well, I, I play a guitar and... Uh, I make funny noises with my mouth. Oh, you mean you're a singer? Well, uh, some people call it that. If you don't sing any better than you play the trombone, I don't think we'll go to the show. Oh, but Marge, we've been counting on this. We gotta go. Well, son, if your uh, if your mother won't take you, I'll see what I can do. Ah, oh, she ain't my mother. She's only my sister. And if she won't take me, I'll tell on her. That's what Dad bought us to town for. Uh, where is your father? Oh, he's down at the mint saloon. Billy, you might explain to the man that father's there on business. Oh, yeah, my dad's the county commissioner. He has a whole lot of business. <laughs> well, if you'll pardon me, I seem to have some business of my own. I'll see you later. Hey, hey, hey! Haven't you done enough damage with that horn? Oh, well, Tex, it slipped that time. I can do much better. Now, now listen to this. <laughs> I just wanted enough to attract their attention, not frighten them away. Well, well Tex, I was just going to play them a tune. Uh, not now, Grace. Later. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, uh, step in closer, please. Don't be afraid. Just a little closer. That's fine. Now, ladies and gentlemen, tonight you're going to see one of the greatest shows ever presented in Tombstone. 
One of the finest aggregations of talent ever presented on any stage. Brought together by that famous empresario, Professor McGill. Flanked by one of the finest troops of entertainers ever seen west of Dodge City. Not now? Uh, not now, Greg. Later. Step right up, ladies and gentlemen. The line forms to the left. Have your money ready, and Professor McGill himself will greet you. Step right up, ladies and gentlemen. Fifty cents. One half of a dollar. Don't be bad. That's right. Everybody goes in tonight. Not now, Tex. Uh, not now, Grass. Wait till we get this bunch on the inside. Step right up, ladies and gentlemen. Come right in. Fifty cents. Have your money ready. One. One, please. Good evening, miss. I've been expecting you. I couldn't disappoint Billy. He has that uh, peculiar taste. Has he gone in yet? Uh, well, yes, uh, about ten minutes ago. Perhaps I'd better join him. He must be lonesome in there all by himself. Well, how are we doing, Professor? Business is excellent, my boy. We've already taken in over two hundred dollars. Well, I guess they're about all in. Time to start. I'll see you backstage. Well, all right, Grant. Now. But, 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 Tate, there ain't anybody around here to hear it. That's the idea. One moment, please. Each. If we like your show, we'll pay you. <laughs> On our way out. What's the matter, Professor? Why, a bunch of ruffians walked in without paying. I tried to stop them, but they threw me on one side. Oh, it's lucky you weren't oh. hurt. Well, well, I'll attend to that later. Let's go on with the show. Hey, Hopper, you make the introduction. Oh, gee, that's swell, but... <laughs> Uh, la Ladies and gentlemen, uh, the, 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 the first number on the program... <laughs> the, 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 the first number on, on the program tonight will, will, will be Mr. Uh, Mr. Tex Mollison, the, the, the world's greatest uh, both, uh, vocalist and, and uh, vocalist and guitarist. Uh, guitar the world's greatest vocalist and well, yes. Anyway, he sings. <laughs> hey, you went over great. Listen to that applause. That's the finest introduction I ever had. Wide, I ride handsome. I 
folks. It's mighty encouraging to a performer, especially to a new one like I am. And just to show you how much I, I appreciate it, I'd like to do something for you that's a little different from what you usually see in a theater. But I'm, I'm going to need the cooperation of every one of you. But I promise that if you do cooperate, you're going to be highly entertained. All right, top boy, let's have it. All right. Now, every one of you, keep your eyes straight to the front while I walk to the back of the theater and play a few notes on my guitar. And when I play those notes, something very peculiar is, is going to happen. And shall I do it? Yeah, go ahead. Go on. All right now, folks. Everybody turn and look at the stage. Are you ready? Yeah. Now every man in the audience raise his hands over his head. It may not be so easy on the next man that reaches for his gun. Now everybody face the stage again. Professor McGill, will you step down here, please? Professor. Will you point out the men that walked into this show without paying? Yes, these are the men. Now, all you folks except these men back here can put on your hands. I'm sorry to trouble you, but uh, these men came into this show without paying. Now, that's not fair to you, and it ain't fair to us. All right, Professor. Collect 50 cents each from these gentlemen. Wait a minute, Mallinson. <laughs> we were just having a little fun. I'll pay for all of us. Well, I'm sure that everybody found your little joke uh, quite amusing. All right, Professor. Take the gentleman's money and we'll go on with the show. Thank you. Professor McGill has a real treat in store for you now, in the person of Salty Holmes, the boy that does strange things with a harmonica. Come on, boy. Let her go, Salty. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I have a number here called the Fox Chase, which you can hear the dogs, the man hollering, whistling, hear all of that at once. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
give my bottom dollar to find out who fired those wagons. So would I. We only took in a little over two hundred dollars last night. And our expenses are over a hundred. Well, what we got to do now is to raise enough money to buy some new equipment. But where and how? Well, I... I don't know yet. I'm going into town to see if I can find a way to put us on our feet again. Oh. I can't have you shoulder my loss. Now, but Professor, it's not only your loss. It's jeans and hoppers and all the rest of the outfit. I'll see you later. Fine lad. Three on the red, six on the green. Twenty on the white. Blank. Yes, sir, Mr. Workman. They tell me this fellow Mallison made monkeys out of Price in his outfit. Any man that can make Price and the rest of them call quits deserves a lot of credit. I'd like to meet that young fellow. That's him coming in right now. What do you have? Buttermilk. Buttermilk? Coming right up, Mr. Mollison. My name is Sheriff Higginbotham, Mr. Mallison. Well, I, I guess you got a warrant for my arrest on account of what happened at the theater last night. No, you were within your rights. <laughs> well, that, that's something. <laughs> As a matter of fact, you were quite a hero. Yeah? You betcha. Well, maybe I was just born lucky. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, meet Mr. Workman, one of our county commissioners. I do, sir. Pleased to meet you, Mr. Mallinson. Thanks, sir. My son and daughter told me about how you handled that situation at the theater last night. Oh, that is nothing. I, I just happened to catch them off guard. <laughs> I don't know about that. From what I hear, handling difficult situations seems to be somewhat in your line. I'm sorry about what happened to your wagons last night. Yeah, that was mighty unfortunate. The burning of those wagons left us flat broke. Well, except what little money we took in last night at the theater. Any idea who did it? No question in my mind at all. It was Price in his game. I wouldn't be surprised, but what you are right. Ed, what can you do about it? Well, I... I don't believe I can do anything about it. Uh, that is, leastwise, without more direct proof. I think Mr. Mallison here is just guessing. Well, anything we can do, just let us know. Thank you, sir. 
There is something you can do right now. Yes? Yes, sir. What's that? Just say the word. I've got to find a job. Joe, what about those unpaid taxes? That's a great idea. Suppose we sit down and talk it over. All right. Say, is there any money in this uh, tax collecting business? 10% of $20,000. But it's mighty risky. And you'll have to tackle Harry Price. And a lot more like him. Hey, I already like that job. All right, then. It's a deal. Ed here will swear you in, and you can make your headquarters at my ranch. Well, uh, I like that part of it, too. Howdy, Miss Workman. How do you do? Uh, I want you to meet my friend, Mr. Hopper. I call him Grant, but uh, most folks know him as uh, Claude. Oh, lay off, will you, Tex? How do you do, Mr. Hopper? Oh, how do you do, ma'am? Is your father home? No, he's out in the South Range, but he was expecting you. You can put your things in the bunkhouse. Hiya, Tex, we've been expecting you. Yeah, hello there, Billy, hello. I want you to meet my friend, Mr. Hopper. Uh, what are there, Mr. Uh... Hopper. Hopper. <laughs> hello, Billy. Hi. Say, Tex, I borrowed this off the cook. Will you show me how to play it? Oh, listen, Sonny. You don't want to learn how to play that thing. Let me show you a real instrument. Uh, not now, Grass. Uh, later. Oh, Tex, listen. Remember the horses. Sis don't like nothing but guitar music since she saw the show the other night. Why, well, Billy, I never said anything like that. Why, you did, too. You know you did. You've just been waiting for Tex to get here. And she even put on her Sunday go meeting clothes. <laughs> Well, uh, she looks very nice, but perhaps we'd better go on with the music lesson. See, that's well. What number you did at the show last night, Tex? All right, Billy. What are you doing here, Valentin? I'm here on business. I know your business. We don't allow strangers meddling in our affairs down here. And if you don't want something for you, you'll clear out. Toronto! I'm not meddling in your affairs, Mr. Price. I'm tending strictly to my own. Are you going? Or do we have to run you out? You and these other gentlemen owe some money to the rest of the citizens of this county for back taxes. Now, I've been deputized to collect them. And I aim to do it. Try and do it. Not for me. Let's run him out. Yeah. If you and your partner are not on your horses and riding away from here by the time I count five, you'll be dead men. Well, that's fair enough. But I just want to say a few words, Price. Then it's up to you. I'm not paying out any money to feed a lot of thieving politicians up in Tombstone. Is that clear? That's right. That's the way I feel about it. Let's tell them, Harry. That's plenty clear. But there's another matter. Then what's that? A few minutes ago, you gave us a count of five to get on our horses and get out of here. Now, I, I still have a little self-respect left, even if I have been talking to a few men who haven't. And I don't aim to be run out of here like a coyote. Well, you're gonna be. Shut him up, Harry. Is that all you have to say? No. I understand that you're the fastest man on the draw in this county. Now, uh, I don't have that big a reputation, but I'm willing to take my chances at 10 paces with you. Well, shall I oblige the gentlemen, boys? Sure, sure. go ahead. Yeah. Let them have it. I'm a little out of practice, but I'll take a chance. Fine, fine. Uh, but there's just one other matter. Yeah? Uh, of course, if, if you win, they'll be getting a new deputy county treasurer. But if I win, they'll get their back taxes from every one of you. Is that fair? Yeah. You want to gamble? Sure. Yeah. Go ahead. We'll stand back to back. 
Walk ten paces, turn and fire. All right. Pete, you count. Well, maybe you better let Joe do it. All right. Is this all right? Suits me. Ready? Right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Thanks. I want to thank you boys for agreeing to pay your taxes. Are you going to pay them? Yeah. You know I'm a man of my word. Come on. Be around to see you in a few days. Yes, Tex. You've done pretty well since you started out. Well, I think I've done pretty good. Of course, some of the boys uh, took a little persuading, but uh, we got them all except Price, and I think we're going after him next. What happened to Hopper? Oh, he, he's down at the corral, uh, playing a lullaby to the cows. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you young folks will excuse me, I think I'll turn in. Come along, Billy. Oh, gee, Pop. Can I stay out a little while? Tex is going to give me a lesson. All right. If you stay out too late. <laughs> Good night. Good night, Mr. Wiggle. Right come on, Tex. Let's go see my hideout. Your hideout? Sure, come on. <laughs> well, uh, shall we invite the lady? Well, all right, if you want to. <laughs> yes, yeah, sir. It takes years of practice to become an accomplished trombone player. Now, you take this piece, for instance. There you go. You're just like all the rest of them. No appreciation. No trespassing, huh, Billy? No, nope, nobody's allowed in here but me, except on special occasions <laughs> like this. Well... <laughs> Your first lesson goes like this. There's a long, long trail of winding. I walk on her is through. But now
as if we have visitors. You and Billy better get out of here. I'm going to have a look around. Come on, Billy. Billy! Dex, it... It hurt. Billy! 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 Expecting a visit from Mr. Mountson. He's done all the tax collecting he'll ever do. You mean you paid off? Yeah. I paid off. This is Price's layout. Hey, perhaps you'd better stay here and uh, uh, look after the horses. Oh, Tex, why don't you lay off this tax business before somebody gets hurt? It's gonna give me the most genuine pleasure to collect from Mr. Price. He'll probably be laying for you after what happened. I have a hunch that you'll be a little surprised to see me. Tex, you're just one of those guys that don't know when he's well off. Don't you worry about me none. Yeah, and there's another thing. If I came to collect. Well, don't you think you'd better put that iron away? Might go off. Weren't expecting to see me, were you? Sure. We made a bargain, didn't we? Now, what's the matter? Not nervous, are you? You know, I'm just here to see that you pay your taxes. Why, certainly. How much do I owe? Seven hundred and eighty dollars and forty-seven cents. By the way, what proof have I that I paid my taxes if you don't happen to turn them in? When I hand you a receipt, you're in the clear. 
It's up to me to get into Tombstone with the cash. Oh. Joe, give me the cash bag. They come. Wait till they get directly below us. I haven't got enough ammunition to last much longer. I'm going to try and make it back to the ranch. Don't be a fool, Graves. They'll pick you off before you can hit the saddle. Looks like we got him, boys. Come 
Come on. need to worry any more about him. Now we'll do a little tax collection. Open those bags. Say, hey, this thing's light as a feather. There's $20,000 in those packs. Hit them enough. It's hey, It can't be. Now one's going to trick us. That's right. How'd you guess it? Reach for the sky. Toss your guns on the ground. You first. Now you. And you. You. All right, Christ. Fighters men off of the low road. Hopper and I'll go after tech. certainly can't handle that gun of yours. Did they get any of the money? I don't see how they could. Uh, what do you mean? I put it in his barn. That's me. Always using my head. Well, what do we do with him? Uh, you and Hopper take him into Sheriff Higginbotham. While I'll go back to your ranch and, and get the money. Oh, by the way, uh, there's a rather important question I'd like to ask your daughter. Do you mind? <laughs> Not at all, my boy. You have my blessing. <laughs> See you later, Hopper. <laughs> well, 
Because that makes me an orphan. I've owned 10,000 doggies and one old mangy mule. I've blowed a million paces like a crazy on a red fool. I've seen the finest gals on earth from silk to crinoline. I've had delirium tremens, but there's nothing I ain't seen. Houston, Arizona, soon I'm gonna see. I'm pretty night broke, but if I don't choke, I'll sing a joke till I fill my poke in Houston, Arizona. Troubles and tombstones, but I found it worth the while. For sitting right beside me is what won me with a smile. We'll ride this dear old buckboard down the trail of married life. For I'm sworn into love and honor and the babe my wife. Houston, Arizona, you've been kind to me. You gave me a bride, she's my pride. Away we'll ride side by side. Houston, Arizona. Troubles and tombstones, but I found it worth the while. For sitting right beside me is what won me with a smile. We'll ride this dear old buckboard down the trail of married life. For I'm sworn into love and honor and the babe my wife. Houston, Arizona, you've been kind to me. You gave me a bride, she's my pride. Away we'll ride side by side. Houston, Arizona.